Hey guys, it's E here from Virginia Grace Living. So today I have some Mango Mama hot sauce here. This is one of my most popular hot sauces that I sell here in Virginia locally. Um, so let me just show you a little bit real quick up close. It's just a beautiful color. This is made with um, sugar rush peach, habanero, and scorpion peppers. This batch actually has a little bit of some scotch bonnets in there as well. Uh, and of course you gotta have some mango in here and a little bit of pineapple. Um, so it's a nice, bright, tropical, fruity, but very hot, it's a hot sauce. So um, this one's probably the hottest one that I make. So in today's video, I'm gonna kind of show you guys how I go through and make this. So I'm sharing that with you guys. Feel free to make it at your house. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and if there's anything I can help you with as far as how to process hot sauce and with the labels or anything like that, I'd be happy to help you. Um, so I do sell uh, the hot sauce here and I want to just encourage you guys that um, there's a lot that you can do with a small space. So I want to remind everybody I live on a quarter acre um, and all of my hot sauces are come from peppers that I grow here at the house and of my entire garden I only have peppers in a 4x8 raised bed. All right. So I'm producing a lot of hot sauce from a small footprint. So you guys can do it. Um, and I encourage you guys to think big and, and do things with small spaces. All right, so we're gonna get into the video, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you like this type of video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe. It's the first thing you definitely, when you're working with peppers like this, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put on some gloves. So I have my powder free nitrile gloves here get these on and we're going to wash these peppers de-seed them so i'm working with some habaneros in here some scotch bonnets um also i have a couple of small ah scorpion peppers so i got some scorpions here get you a better shot of that and then we got these Really yummy sugar rush peach peppers here. Add a nice sweetness and a little citrusy flavor and definitely a little bit of heat, but not near as much as the habaneros and everything else in here. So also I have just a couple of just lemon drop peppers that uh that I'll throw in here. I'm trying to keep all the color scheme, you know, in the orangish yellowish uh for this mango habanero sauce. Alright. So mainly just want to get these seeds out. And that's why you want to wear the gloves because this is where all your heat is inside of these membranes right here where the seeds attach. So I'm running these through a food processor. Um, so as we go, I'm just going to be tossing all the stuff in here. So we're going to cut through these. I'm going to speed this part of the video up. So we got all the peppers cut up um, I didn't weigh these I don't know the exact weight so um, I make my hot sauce by sight and taste um, so I can't give you the exact recipe but if you want to follow along and figure it out that is totally fine with me I hope you uh, do make some and that you enjoy it. all right now we're gonna get this mango cut up and then we're gonna put three mangoes in here and also um, a pineapple that's sliced up. So I'm not an expert mango slicer by any means, so. So I have pineapple and mango here. I'm gonna dump into the Ah, food processor. Get that blended up. And we're gonna add some other ingredients. All right, so at this point, this stuff is really thick. I mean, it's good. But we're gonna add a little bit of stuff in here to thin it out and help make it shelf stable. We're going to add some lemon juice, a little bit of water and vinegar. Not much vinegar and then a touch of salt. So we're gonna do about a one tablespoon of salt in here. 
two tablespoons of lemon juice. Can I do that, Dad? No, Dad, you're gonna have to do it. One, two. You got it? Oh, you got it. All right, and then Amber's gonna do a cup of water. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and get this blended back up, and then we're gonna cook it. It's showing up very faint, but it's right now at about 3.85, which is just fine. We just want to be below 4.6. That's going to help with your shelf stability. Uh, it means it's acidic enough to where no bacterial growth or anything can occur within it. We're still going to go ahead and pasteurize it and hit it with the immersion blender before we get it bottled up. We're going to get this using a stainless steel pot. Go ahead and pour our sauce in here. Nice big batch of sauce this time. I'm really happy with the volume we got going here. So I have my stainless steel pot. Get that to a low simmer. And we're gonna let that simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes and then hit it with the immersion blender. While that's going, I'm gonna start sterilizing some bottles over here. All right, you gotta make sure you kind of push them and let the air bubbles all fall out so they get full of water whenever you're sterilizing this. I let these boil or at least sit in boiling hot water for about 10 minutes is at least. Uh, just to, as a precautionary measure. I like to be as clean as possible and uh, sterile and that's, that's a big step in making sure that your stuff is shelf stable as well. Especially if you're selling your sauces like I do, uh, you want to take every precaution you can and make sure that um, you know you're just selling a clean product. And I mean, even if, even if it's just for you and your family, you don't want uh, you don't want to give your family something that is not uh, you take your time and that you put your energy into. You want it to be good. You want it to last a while, and uh, just want it to be sanitary. All right, so you want to take a hot bottle. All right, this is important. Bottle's hot, the sauce is hot, and we're gonna go ahead and do a hot fill on this bottle. So I have a ladle here, this is nothing fancy. There's definitely more fancy ways to do this, but I'm using what I have here on hand. We're gonna go ahead and fill this while it's hot. All right, so this sauce is currently at about 100 and, um, I think it was about 150 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna grab another bottle to catch the drippings from this little funnel here. All right, so I always include a reducer on my hot sauces. So the little reducer thing here. A lot of people take them off, but I just put it there just in case. So put the reducer on. Go ahead and um, put your lid on. And the next step, so this is called the hot fill and flip method. So you take that hot bottle, careful it is hot. You're gonna drop it in there with the lid facing down. I like to use my box because it's just a good way to hold it. And what that does is it's also sanitizing the inside of that lid and with that heat. Uh, and then we're gonna just let that sit there. It needs to hold at like 110 degrees or so for about 10 minutes shouldn't be a problem because we're going to put a lot more around it and that'll insulate. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these filled up. Move on to our little shrink wraps here. So these are the heat shrink wraps. I'll show you how those work in just a second. Alright, so next up is putting these shrink wrap labels, or not labels, shrink wrap, uh, just shrink wrappers on here, I guess you call it, uh, for sealing it. So they just slide on here. While that water's still hot, we're gonna go ahead and take it, just dunk it in there, hold it for a second, and swirl it around if you want. Just make sure that you get a good shrink and a good seal on it. And then, there you go. That's what it looks like. So I'll do a couple more and show you guys. And then after this, we're gonna move on to labeling. So get your shrink wrap on. Careful, don't burn your hands. 
It's on there nice. Just gives it a nice professional look as well. If you're selling sauce, um, if you plan on selling it anyways, just taking the time to make things look professional, designing your own labels has really been a help to me, I believe, uh, here locally. So I'm allowed to locally sell. You just need to check your laws for cottage laws. I live in Virginia and uh, you can sell from a home produced kitchen as long as you follow the guidelines on that. All right guys, so wrapping up the video here, um, I have some labels and everything that I'm gonna be putting on. So I just print these off. These are, um, I don't know, they came with the hot sauce bottle, but I have a laser jet, so it, it does a pretty good job. Um, and then I also do these labels. I'll get you a closer up look uh, in a second. So this is uh, in accordance with the Virginia Cottage Law. So you just gotta put uh, the net weight and the package on date so today is november the 11th or 12th and it's 2022 so as you put these in you got to put your address all that stuff not not for resale and producing a home kitchen and then on my label up front i have some of the ingredients and everything there so uh just check your state laws and everything so i put these on each bottle um Especially the ones, if, if I'm just giving them out to friends or family, I don't. But if I'm selling locally, I always make sure to um, put those on the bottles. So, um, plus it just looks really nice with this label. Uh, I'm going to give you a preview here just a second. I'm going to get these labeled up. So anyhow, that makes it look professional and just like the way it looks. So we're going to get the rest of these labeled up. Um, and that's pretty much it guys. I really appreciate you watching the video and um, thanks for watching guys. God bless.